Right. Um, so we're here with Mr. David Bowman, president of Artifact Entertainment from the U.S., and we'd like to ask some questions about the work they've been doing in the U.S. lately. So I will start by asking you, uh, would you explain our viewers uh, your role you have in Artifact and Entertainment, and in specific in the Horizons project? Sure. Uh, as you said previously, uh, uh, I'm the president and CEO of Artifact Entertainment, but I'm also the creative director on Horizons. Uh, Horizons is our massively multiplayer project. Uh, my role in a daily fashion for Horizons is the direction of where the game is headed. What are we doing? What are we building? Uh, directing the flow of the features and, and uh, creative content for the game. Sure. <clears throat> well, now we see that uh, five months ago, uh, Horizons was released. And I was asking you, uh, how do you feel about uh, the future of the game? And maybe if you can tell some, something about, about this. Sure. Uh, we launched uh, in December, both here in Europe and in, in North America. And uh, since that time, we've, we've gone through some uh, you know, technical issues where we found uh, problems in the product, which is very common in these games. We solved all of those issues. We've moved forward. Uh, the game itself is really starting to mature now, starting to come into its own. Uh, we, uh, I think that we have uh, solved any issues that would prevent us from, from growing this product to be its full potential, its, its exciting future potential. Sure. Well, actually, we have seen that uh, you have made a good job by the new patches and all the improvement that has been done. And my question was, uh, what are your plans about, I don't know, fixing new bugs? and features like, right. like that? Well, for the first, first several months, we concentrated on getting out the, the features for the product that we had promised our audience to make sure that we got the adult flying dragons into the game, to make sure that we, we really improved the, the feature set of the game. Uh, since that time, we've been concentrating uh, recently on the uh, mistakes that we had made in some of the code. We've solved those problems, and we have a list of uh, performance issues that we're continuing to work on daily. As our audience discovers those things that you can't find until you have thousands of people working together to find them, um, we've been putting them into a list, prioritizing that list, and fixing them. So for the next one to two months, our primary concentration is going to be on improving the quality of performance, optimizing the client, making sure that it runs smoothly, making sure that the, uh, all of the content is, is uh, consistent, that there's no gaps within any requests, that there's no problems within the content of the, of the product. Uh, and then we'll once again start to concentrate on some of the new, more exciting features that we have for the future of the game. Great. Um, in specific, what about community build building? Because it's uh, like a key role of the game. So uh, what's your insight? When we thought about creating Horizons, we wanted to take the, the uh, traditional massively multiplayer game, which is all about me, the character. I, I, I wanted to improve myself. And we wanted to turn that around and say the world is what the game is about. And community building is the way we chose to really express that for the players. They can own a piece of property and to choose to do what they want with the property. Today, we have the ability for players to choose which types of decorative items and structures they place on it. Going forward, we want to make sure that every single structure that gets placed on a, on a, on a plot it has a purpose, it has game impact, it changes the world, it improves the, the experience for the player. Uh, some specific examples of this is we finally have been able to get silos so that the silos uh, provide the functionality of, of storage and as we, as we move forward, we'll be adding each specific structure with a specific purpose. The team now understands how to make that work, how to make that happen. Uh, obviously, on the, on, the, uh, on, well, on the horizon is the uh, advent of dragon structures as well. Um, we have them in the product, but getting a system that lets dragons provide uh, the same kind of creativity and structure building that the other races have had sure. uh, is one of the big priorities for the products going forward. Sure, so everything down for a specific reason. Exactly. So yeah. Some of them could be aesthetic. You could have an, a, a very nice fence, um, and you could have a very nice, uh, pretty, uh, we have fountains in the game. Those are aesthetically functioning. But we want to add more and more features that add sure. either increased storage or provide a bonus to the player 
provide defensive abilities because we're going to get much more aggressive as we go forward with what the monsters are doing Absolutely. to the players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have noticed that, for example, European players have a kind of different approach from the U.S. players. Yes. And most of them uh, we have seen are very, uh, let's say, uh, hardcore players because they're really keen on the game. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you have any specific uh, development about for these players which are uh, very keen on the game, let's say? Or so we've created, we've created the systems of schools that allow people to progress. And as you said, the Europeans are very organized and very, very aggressive in, in moving through that content. And they've done a very good job there. And all the events, the high-level events that we've been adding into the game, they've been very quick to conquer and to sure. move on. It's, it's very exciting to watch. For those players, for those hardcore players, both North American and European, we realized that we really need to take the product and provide what we call an elder game, to provide that, that senior experience that lets them do something that is uh, exciting in and of itself. The actual action is exciting, and not just a, a goal of reaching or, or trudging past some number. We have a very specific plan for that. The team is uh, excited about it, and we we're not, we're not going to talk about the details of it today. But we know players will like this, and it will it, it, it will be coming this year. Sure. Well, that's great. Uh, we have seen some very good new features, like for example the rite of passage, and which, in my opinion, is very real and brilliant. So, uh, are you maybe planning some new exclusive features for the next future, which of course you can reveal? Because, as you said, some things can sure. be revealed. So, uh, the things that we would be willing to talk about now, of course, it's, if a, you have it's some very difficult. It's very sure, difficult sure. to talk about something that that uh, we have not already completed. That's been one of the policies that we've had in the sure. past. But I will, I will say this much: we will continue to do races. We will continue to add new challenges, new monsters, and as players have started to see, we're getting much better at the, the rule sets for the monsters, at the, the, making the danger levels higher. We're going to be working on the rewards a lot more as well. Um, so to increase the interest level for the players. And to reward those danger levels, to make, sure. to make, make it worth your time to go out with a group of your friends and sure. to hunt larger, more powerful creatures that are much more dangerous and to be rewarded appropriately for that. That's, well, that's, that's as far as I'm going to go there, but there's a lot of very interesting things we've learned from our players yeah, and what they want. Sure, well that's great. Uh, well, as I said before, we all recognize that uh, you have been doing a great job, but uh, there are some players that uh, still complain that there is a lot more to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you tell to those guys? I agree, there's a lot more sure. to be done. There's Every day we are uh, both creating and actively constructing new things for the product. We're also thinking of all those things that we want to add into the game ourselves. All of us, all the developers, are we're gamers. We're people who play these games, and we play Horizon specifically. Sure. And we love this game. We want to grow it. We want one year, two years, three years, four years down the road to continue to grow and love this product. So with that being said, the... Uh, the gamers who right now think the game isn't done are correct, because the game will never be done. We're sure. going to continue to grow it. We can always improve it. We can always improve it, and we're aggressively improving it. Improving it. We, we know there are flaws. We listen to the audience. We listen to the users, and we know that we can improve this game, and we are doing so. Great. Uh, I would ask you your view on the MMORPG market, because there are many titles now hidden in the shelves. Yes. And just your global view on the market and what, what can be done about that? Or Well, I, I know that the audience is expanding. I know that we're getting more and more players, uh, both in North America, spe specifically here in Europe. Uh, this, is a, this is a very large, untapped market, something sure. that um, has been not well served in the past. I think that with this growing market, there's growing competition. But I would point out that four years ago, when I was looking... Um, at the market, there were 86 different developers working on massively multiplayer games, and we didn't, haven't seen the launch of 86 products since that time. Sure. Most companies that set out to try to do this fail to do it. It's a very difficult challenge. But those of us who do succeed in launching a game and making an enjoyable experience for tens of thousands of customers, it's going to become a little bit more competitive because there's 
there's more and more um, successes competing for that same space. Each product needs to find a good audience, serve that audience well, and serve them for a long time to know they're going to be there for a very long time. Absolutely. And what do you think about the so-called uh, kill the monster, level up process? I mean, do you think in the future there might be some uh, diverse uh, development about this? I, I think two things are going to happen. Sure. You'll see specific small niche games, games that are designed to uh, please five to 10,000 customers and make a profit off of it. And those, those products can have a very specific rule set that, um, that, that pleases that audience. And it can be very, very different from what we have now in Level Up. Uh, there's a, there are some small products today that are out there. Uh, a Tale in the Desert is an example of that, which is not centered on this Level Up Kill a Monster. In fact, there's no killing at all in that product. Sure. So there's an example right there of a, of, of a small developer trying to break out of the mold. We'll see more of these, these niche games being made, but we'll also see products like Horizon, where what we've done is build a platform, and we can add lots of new experiences with different rules. So community building um, has at its core some leveling, which is the ability to get more skillful, but you, you can micro change that. You can design where you want to go with those skills, and then it's just building. You're finding customers. It's relationships. It's sure. not about leveling. It's about finding people who want things built for them and working with them. So even within Horizons, you're going to see a breaking out from just the pure leveling, the pure rope, uh, killing of, of monsters over and over again. Sure. But there will always be kill a monster, get a prize games. These, that's very successful. Absolutely. Well, that's the basis, actually. Yeah. So uh, always on this market, um, there's a kind of release expansion technique, basically. Uh, every year, there are new expansions on this market. Mm -hmm. um, do you have planned any of them, and can you propose now some of them? Or We know that we'll be doing our first expansion. Yeah. Um, it has been discussed. We know the details of uh, the concept, but we are not currently implementing that. We're not working on that expansion because we want to concentrate on Horizons today, making Absolutely. sure that we, sure. we really fulfill our current customers' expectations. Sure. Once we've solidified that, we will begin the construction of the expansion pack and providing a whole new value-added experience that is, a, is an option for our customer base. Well, that's great. Last question, I will ask you, it's a, a kind of a free ride. Mm -hmm. So do you have personally uh, a question that you like to answer but nobody ever asked you? So, uh, more than a question, I think it's, it's an, it, a, a statement. Horizon is a game, it's a world. And in that world, we're going to be adding everything that we can think of that is fun and enjoyable within that scheme of, of Horizons. And we're going to be doing that for years. We believe in this as a lifetime. We believe in this as a, as a, a, a passion. And sure. so I just want people to understand that this is not a hobby for us. This is not just a commercial endeavor. This is... This is a lifetime endeavor for a lot of some very, of course, you believe in excited course. people. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. I want to thank you very much for being here, and hope to see you again here soon in Italy and in Europe. Thank you for so, having me. All the best. Thank see you very you. much. Thank you.